Hey everybody, and howdy y'all, and welcome to the Fowler Show. Today's show, we're going to be showing you some educational tips. That's right, children. Pull out your textbooks and turn to page... Not really. <laughs> uh, before I go any further, I want to send out a big, super duper howdy y'all and I love you to that perfectly, extremely perfectly beautiful, extremely perfectly sexy, extremely perfectly important, extreme perfect trophy mine, the true queen of beauty, like I said, the extreme perfect trophy wife of mine, Miss Jules Bucky Fowler, who I love with all my heart, my soul, my body, and my mind, because she lights up my everything, because she is, I'm hers till the end, because she's the love, the life, and light of my life. A.K.A. Leafy of Jules. And now the second devil, how do y'all love you, goes out to the world's greatest, my favorite set of in-laws, Jeff and Marianne Smith. How do y'all and love you? To the rest of my Quokka family, including Aunt Bridget and all the others, a big how do I love y'all? Well, this throat can bind. Oh, the guy down the road, Martin. No, yeah, no, no, no. We we shouted out to him last time. He, he didn't shout back. Uh, I think he shot back, but we, we're not sure. <laughs> uh, as always, we have the producer one. Producer two is up in the loft looking at us. The director is floating around somewhere. We're not sure. We haven't seen him in a while. Which is, I mean, so terrible. It's just, it's it's awful. We, we miss our can our director. We miss him so badly. We, he's a great guy. Just a super duper great guy. And ladies and gentlemen, as always, we have Martin Shumway on the camera. Hi, Martin. No, you're not getting a raise. No. No. If you can find him, go talk to the director. You might get a raise that way. Um, okay. Anyways, today we're going to do some edu education things, or educational, or whatever you want to say. I'm chillaxing here. And, and uh, we are... Oh, okay. Getting kind of old, so I'm having to be careful. Shut up, Martin. Back to going. <laughs> Maybe he forgets who signs his paycheck. We might be recruiting and needing a new camera person. I think I see one that might have an accident. <laughs> and a bad accident. You know, if, at his age, he might trip off a curb or get run over by an 18 wheeler that's set on fire. Something. Anyways, <laughs> um, cameramen are they're just the greatest people. I, I love all cameramen. I just love cameramen, they are just the greatest. Anyways, so uh, before I get really into the middle of what I'm flipping around, um, I want to cover some things. For those of y'all who've seen the uh, the Fowler Show equals sound impressions um, uh, video, the bolt action rifle I used. Just to clarify, that's a twenty two mag. I didn't have one of my heavy rifles. I had it strictly there as a prop for sound. Um, what I wanted to clarify, it is not legal, especially here in Oklahoma, but not many other places, and nowhere else I know of is it legal to take a .22, 22 long rifle, twenty two short, twenty two long imperial, twenty two mag or seventeen of any kind, a rim fire shot. 
um, and, and legally hunt deer with it. So that that's I just had that as a prop. Don't don't watch my video and just say, well, he went on a deer hunt and an elk hunt with a twenty two mag. We're going on a deer hunt with an elk and an elk hunt with a twenty two mag. No, don't don't do that kind of stuff. It was strictly there as a prop. Um, you want to see what one of the rifles I carry deer hunting is? Go look at, there's a video of me holding a can that looks like it's been blown apart. Well, it was. Uh, yeah, go check that video out. You'll see what I carry. Um, one of them. And, uh, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's it's freaking hilarious. One of them. <laughs> Maybe I ought to be the writer and fire them. <laughs> um. Uh. No. And also. Um. There's. Uh. You know, y'all. Y'all know that I'm doing these memes now, and they're coming. I apologize. They're coming out, and they're hitting. Facebook and Instagram in the next little while. Uh, well, I'm going to have those out there for y'all to enjoy. Like I said in the sound impression video, some people are going to see these memes and go, some people are going to see it and go, some people are going to look at it and go, huh, huh. Some people are going to say, oh, that's cute. Oh, that's, I guess, funny. There's going to be some people like hunters and outdoors men and women. Um, hunters and huntresses. <laughs> if we want to be politically correct. I just say hunter. Hunter is a hunter. Hunter doesn't mean necessarily a man. Uh, I know plenty of women who are hunters. So, um, trappers, fishermen. Um, fisher men, fisher women. I know plenty of both sides that hunt, fish, trap. So, um, anyway, um, a lot of hunters out there are going to look at it and go, yeah, all right. There's going to be some hunters that see these memes and go, this guy kind of understands it a little. There's going to be a few hunters that look at it and go, well, I can tell by this. But this man is not just some kid from the inner city making fun of hunting because he doesn't, or some dummy who doesn't know anything that they're talking about. Um, and then there's going to be people like, like, um, serious dedicated hunters that are, yeah, we like this. This is so funny. This is so true. Um, then there's going to be people like me. We're very rare, I think. I have yet to meet another one. Other than my own self. Uh, I'm an outdoor holic. Um, you want me to, a deeper explanation of that? When I get in my truck, I turn the key on, right? You're following me. I got an automatic. You know, you pull it out of park, put it in reverse, back up a little, put it down into drive, and you're going, you touch the gas, and you're going, right? Okay. When I take it out of park, and I go into reverse, I happen to back up, which I do out here. I back up. When I've taken it out of park and put it in reverse, I've taken the safety off. And in reverse, I'm just unloading a spent shell. When I put it in the drive, I just shoved a new one back in and latched the bolt down. And the moment I touch the gas pedal, I've pulled the trigger on a deer, an elk, bear, whatever. That's my mentality. We, yeah, we... Uh, if there are other outdoor holics out there, um, I'm just getting into the videos heavy, kind of not not looking to do it professionally, but uh, leave a comment if you're an outdoor holic. Uh, if you not not just the old T-shirt saying of eat, sleep, outdoors, repeat. You know, if you're really like me, I when people try to tell me about something. Or say something that I don't understand. I don't go. Oh it's like. Um, it's like when. Two words meet up. And that's that. That's. I might go. To the only thing I really know. Which is. 
oh, that's just like docking a boat and throwing out your buoy so you don't hurt the sides of your boat or uh-huh. Oh, that that's like uh, this outdoor experience, this outdoor experience. All right, nothing. Just always constant outdoor alcoholic year round. It, one good sign of an outdoor alcoholic. Dedicated hunters do this to you know any hunter really kind of does. But an outdoor alcoholic literally leaves that much of his mind or more. If you're like me, a lot more. Twenty four seven. 365, 24-7, 365 days, 66 in a leap year. There's a big chunk of this brain, what little there is in there, that does not, at the end of bow season in January, it don't get out of the stand. Like when I have to get out of the stand and come home to sleep, do work, whatever, I don't mean a little bitty pin. I mean, like, you know, a good chunk of this brain stays 24-7, 365 days a year, 66 in the leap year, in that eight-foot treehouse of mine up there, in my deer stand, year-round, never leaves. I'm always constantly thinking of my deer stand. Not as much as I constantly think of my wife. I think of her all the time. But it never leaves my deer stand. There's my wife. My deer stand somewhere right in there. 24-7, 365 days a year or 66 in a leap year. Um, but uh, now I'm kind of... Somewhere, I, I, I was going somewhere with this. Where did I go from here um oh the funny thing yes uh the uh <laughs> that you know let's see one of the guns i carry <laughs> one of um anyways somewhere i was going with that that's that's an outdoor holic's mind there we go i knew i was getting back to it um uh, if you're an outdoor holic and you agree with the memes, feel free on Facebook, Instagram, to leave a comment. Leave a comment on here. I, I, I tell you something really cool. I'm not, I, I don't have a contest. I don't give away things. But I'm a hunter. You could dangle. For me, you could dangle. You know, the sports package right here. Yeah! Just, okay, you know, you know how when you go to a tourist type town, there's always these people that have the timeshares, and, you know, you sit there and you hear their spiel, and you either take their offer, or you say no, and you get the money or whatever they're offering, right? I, I don't, I'm not real keen on doing any of that crap now <laughs> if it was going to go on for an entire week straight and it was ne they weren't presenting timeshares but it was all hunting stories from anything from a kid's first deer to a guy on nearly in his deathbed who's retired from a career of hunting telling their stories I will be there on the front row. I will not leave until the, the, they, they quit telling hunting stories. I'll sit there all day. I don't care what else is going on. I will sit there. I, I Oh, yeah. Especially like a, a, a kid's first year story. Oh, I, I definitely, I definitely have to sit there and hear it. <laughs> I, I'm just that way. When they're, when they're, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, they're telling hunting stories. They're telling football stories over there. Yeah. Of course. Anybody who knows me, I, I'm a rugby union fan. Go Springboks. Uh, we but I, good wallaby. Hi, Jeff. Um, <laughs> love you, Dad. <laughs> uh, ain't rugby season, and that's still fun to do. Um... <laughs> um Anyways, uh, you know, you could be going, they're telling football stories over there. 
Go. Have fun. They're watching the big game over there. Mm, nice. Have fun. Uh, well, I guess we're just going to walk on straight a little forward and go out the door. They're telling hunting. <laughs> yeah, I would go over there. Uh, yeah, probably some sort of basketball or something. Oh, just some old guy in camo telling hunting story. <laughs> Adios. Y'all just go on. <laughs> I'll be a while. <laughs> Where'd you say he was? Do they do they give out cots to stay overnight? That's me with hunting stories. If you're watching one of these videos, especially these of the hunting, or you see my memes and and you're like, I relate to this guy. I want to tell him a hunting story. Believe me, brother, brothers and sisters of the woods. You you send me a hunting story, I'll send you one back. I'll tell you about. My antelope, I'll tell you about any of the deer I've ever killed, the the biggest deer I've killed, um, which, I mean, you know, I've, I, I got a good, I don't have a gigantic, huge, gigantic trophy monster mountain mule deer with good mass in the back country, and you get to pack him out. Sorry. <laughs> I love a good pack out story too. I, I've only gotten to pack out once and I enjoyed it. Got done. It was the first time I'd ever done it, packing out a deer. And, uh, and, and, um, told you how I am with hunting stories. And, uh, and when I got done, my dad was with me and he goes, huh, what do you think of this packing out stuff now? And I looked right at him and my exact words were, Are you kidding? When do we do an elk? Can we do an elk this way? Can can we do a hog this way? A whitetail this way? You know, of course, I already had a, a, a doe in my pack. And I'm like, when do we do an elk? Buffalo, bear, whatever, moose, caribou, something. I, 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 have, I have a small pack frame. I have a big pack frame. <laughs> I love pack out stories. Um, but yeah, when you see my memes, give me a shout out. Uh, tell me your, uh, on Instagram, tell me your hunting stories. I'll tell you some of mine, or I'll tell you all of mine. I'll sit there and talk your ear off about my hunting stories. Now, if you see some of the memes I've done of me fishing, and you're like, oh, I would have told him all about my fishing and him tell me all his tips of how he catches them. Don't, don't, don't message me. <laughs> I'm a lot better in the woods with a gun or a bow in my hand than I am with a fishing rod. Uh, trapping, I like trapping. I don't go after one particular target animal, um, but I do. Uh, I do set out traps, um, steel traps. Um, I I have a couple of homemade live traps I put out, and it's not like I put one and just set it on the top of the ground. I mean, I um, I I might do one this winter and just do a video just to show you what it's like and done, and I love it. I really love it. It's like yes, you just got you got you got to go back the next morning, and, and and it's not like deer. It's not like hunting. You're seeing the bobber going bing bing, or or the deer walking in. You're like yeah, or the turkey gobbling right out in front of you at, at fifteen yards or whatever. You know those are great things, but you're not sitting there over that trap. You leave it overnight. Now there's a fifty there's a fifty fifty chance with trapping. You're gonna have something. You're not gonna have something. And either way, your bait's gonna be gone more than likely. <laughs> I love trapping. Uh, trapping is just like yes. Um, but uh, okay. What I was mainly gonna do the videos when I started the memes. Um, talking about the memes, you're gonna see a couple with me wearing orange, a vest and a hat. Um. For those of y'all who don't know out there, there is a, um, like, um, I saw an ad here a while back on Pinterest. It was an older ad. Um, those who hunt with a Kodak camera, there are no game laws for you. Bullcrap. If you're a photographer, bullcrap. If 
you love taking pictures of the changing colors of the leaves, you see Bambi out there. You're like, I want to take pictures of Bambi. I'm just a photographer, got no weapon in my hand except the camera. It could be my cell phone, it could be the little point and click, it could be the big $700 Canon, you know, like I have. And you could be going, oh, Bambi. Don't do that. It's okay to go out there. Wear orange. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know, spend a little extra money. Because I know there's some people going, but you know, them old Velcro things, they just go <laughs> in the wind. Spend a little extra money. You're like, well, we see yours, but you know, the Velcro, it, it, it won't withhold the wind. Spend the extra money. Get one that zips. Enjoy it. They usually have pockets. If you can't find no orange in, uh, zipper vest in your hunting store, go to your local Walmart, wherever they sell work clothes. Get one of those safety vests like you see construction guys wear. Uh, an orange hat. Uh, mine's off over yonder. But they do, they do regular blaze orange like that. They do a camoed orange. Uh, don't do one yourself because, you, you know, there's only so much allowed dark and darkness on your, your uh, vest and your hats. Um, uh, best bet is to buy one. Uh, for all you college football fans, it is okay. You would rather have your buddies, including the OU people, listen up. I'm just a helpful hint here. You would rather have your buddies make fun of you for having that OSU blaze orange OSU orange hoodie on and that OSU orange hat on than them not making fun of you and visiting you in the hospital or worse, attending your funeral because you were shot. There are people out there that, you know, shoot it just when they hear something they shoot. They, they see the bushes moving and they just go bang, 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 you know, type stuff. Trust me. Wear orange. Keep it in your vest. Um, keep it in your vest. Keep it in your car. Um, for all of y'all, just a helpful hint. Most of your state game and fish agencies have a app now. Look up hunting seasons. Uh, go to a tourist information center. Go to your Walmart. Go to where you buy hunting and fishing license, even if you're not a hunter. Go pick up a, a, an outdoor a hunting regulation book. You know, a hunting guide is what they call them. I mean, it's not like the guy that actually goes, follow me, you know, get you over there. Oh, wait, that one's better than the one you were going to want to originally shoot. You know, not a... Not a guided a guide for a guided hunt, but they're a hunting guide. They're like a magazine, and they tell you all the rules and regulations, and and, and they tell you a whole bunch of other cool stuff. They um, how to where to take a deer if you don't know how to clean it, and you want somebody to do it for you. Where uh, how to check one in, how to uh, access this, access that, you know, it, and it has a lot of other cool things in it too. Um, I would encourage anybody to go get a hunter's safety card, whether you're going to hunt or not. It's a great course to take because it teaches you, you know, if you're going to go on a hike, you don't throw magazines and a bottle of suntan lotion in a little bitty backpack. I mean, if you're going to go seriously hike or just go walk in the woods, it basically a hunter's safety course gives you an idea of what you know kind of things you might want. You don't want to 100 pound pack on your back with all the loaded tactical knives and hatchets and stuff you know but you don't have to have that but it's a great course any, any most states offer a hunter safety course of some sort and they're generally well at least the ones i know of that you go sit into sit in person at are about eight hours long or so some of them do shooting some of them don't do shooting but go take it it, it teaches you 
not just about hunting it, it te- and how to be safe doing that. It teaches you how to be safe in the woods in general. Even if you're just the one that pulls out your phone to go out there and take pictures of Bambi. Wear your orange. Uh, and you're like, I, I know some people are going, you're in Oklahoma. Montana's got a nap. Colorado's got a nap. Ask somebody in Colorado. Um, whenever you're looking... If you're a photographer, new hunter, beginning young hunter, and you're wanting to read that, the regulations for the first time, the only, most, I know here in Oklahoma, and I believe over in Arkansas, uh, I know for sure, and seems like a lot of places, a lot of states, in archery, you don't have to wear orange. I know here in Oklahoma, you don't. Public or private land. Any season with a gun, muzzleloader. Some states even have an air gun season. Not not the 177 calibers, but the you know bigger, fancier, more expensive ones. They have an air gun season, shotgun season, rifle season, pistol season. I don't know, as long if there's a if if it's, it talks anything about a gun, and it will define what it is, what a legal firearm is in your regs. That's legal to hunt with for what animals. Um. Wear orange. That that's so. Those are the times you wear orange, and it's not. Well, why I had to wear this. It's better than it's better. You're sitting there wearing it. That's a lot. You having to, you know, put on an orange vest and an orange hat or toboggan or beanie, and sit in the woods, and you're like, why I wear this. It's a whole lot better than, a, than than your friends and family. Crying at your funeral, going, why didn't he wear his orange? It's for your safety. It's it's for safety in general. Um. So, anyways, you know, just be sure to always wear your orange. And enjoy it, you know. Um. So. Uh, we're gonna do a part two to this video. So. Because I had some other stuff I was going to cover with y'all. Uh, but I'll cover a few other things. Like. Um, like. Um, once again I'm gone blank. Anyways. Just be sure you wear your orange. Check your regulations. For anybody who's got an, a, a, a smartphone. Every almost every state agency for their game and fish department has an app, and it's like holding that 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 regulations book in your hand, plus extra features, uh, access to maps and where to hunt. It's awesome. Um, it's it's just a great thing. I know here in Oklahoma, hint hint photographers. I know Oklahoma's game and fish app and the website have competitions and sl- photography slams throughout the year. You just con- have to continue to check it. Uh, and they give you different categories of a- animals, reptiles, amphibians, birds to, sh- well, photographers say the word shoot. We're, 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 but we don't mean shoot or shoot or we're, you know. Um, but they have competitions for that, so it's kind of cool, contest, competition, whatever, kind of cool, you win some things and all that, go check it out in Oklahoma, uh, I'm sure you're, if you're not from Oklahoma, I'm sure your state has one, um, so yeah, uh, and here in a minute, I'll see y'all in part two. Martin didn't know we were splitting it up. <laughs> It's double the work on him. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you cats here in a minute. Um, um, Be sure to study up on that homework because I'm about to give you another good dose of homework. Not really. <laughs> if I was a teacher around this time of the year, I'll show you what, what we'd do for schoolwork in the next video. Alright, until then guys, I'll see y'all right back here on part two in the Fowler Show. Adios.
See y'all.